Okay, so today uh, for Integral Dharma, we're exploring waking up, one of the four ups. Waking up, cleaning up, growing up, and showing up. And waking up is something that uh, really, uh, I assume most, if not all of us, are pretty familiar with uh, here in the Buddhist Geeks community. Um, where a lot, most of us are really oriented and drawn to the practices and the path of waking up. But uh, we, so uh, we can answer a couple of questions. One, what is waking up since we've given it a label compared to uh, these other ups? And then what's it like to explore waking up from an integral Dharma perspective? <clears throat> and then I want to explore one flavor that I, um, one way of exploring waking up that I think represents an integral approach. And that's the difference between sudden and gradual paths of awakening. So first, what is waking up? So many different ways of, of describing this. And I, I really prefer inquiry questions to just use that question and see what arises in experiences versus completely locking down, uh, you know, linguistically a term. But something that's really common in waking up is the, we might use the phrase nature of experience, nature of awareness, nature of reality versus the content of awareness, the content of experience, the content of reality. So there is some sense of, of either transcending or going deeper underneath the content of experience, okay? And this very much can take all sorts of different flavors and expressions. And uh, in the integral world, something that's really useful, meaningful is to explore how that takes different forms and see how uh, what there is in common and then where there's divergence in a really creative and interesting way. One way that we're not exploring today is uh, what uh, Wilbur calls the three faces of, of spirit, I, we, and it. So for example, what is it like to wake up in a flavor of I, we, and it? And even a few of the phrases I've chosen there emphasize pretty much what I chose there was an I and it, nature of reality, it. You hear expressions of it. I, who am I, the kind of pure subjective experience. We, you would, you might experience, um, you know, uh, uh, practices of union, of devotion, those kinds of flavors, just to name a few. So anyways, part of what I wanna invite you into is to start noticing, taking a step back, not disconnecting from your experience, but looking at it in a really curious way. What, how do I particularly practice waking up? What are the characteristics of the path that I have been on so far, the practices that I've explored, um, and what other practices and, and flavors of, of waking up are out there, and how do they compare to what I've done so far, okay? And we're going to do a little bit of that today with the sudden and gradual. Um, so to expand a little bit of why I think that's important uh, of to do this kind of exploration in waking up, um, there, not only are there just different flavors and expressions, there are different methods of waking up, even at different enlightenments. This is a phrase I've heard before too, which for people in waking up, especially if you're really in that passionate effort, like I am going somewhere and I'm waking up in a very particular way, different enlightenment sound, sounds a little bit, what? No, thanks. Like there's one enlightenment and that's what I'm going to attain or that's what I have attained. Um, but in a different way, something that's really inspiring, um, a few, a few, uh, books and traditions that highlight this is, uh, A. Almas, H. Almas, uh, facets of unity. This, if you imagine a diamond that has different facets and you can turn it around, it's the same diamond, but if you turn it, the facets are going to feel and look a little different. Uh, the, is it 99 faces of God in the Sufi tradition or 99 faces, names of God, something like that. I always mess up the term, but there are all these different facets of, of waking up that, that are part of one seamless experience, you know, that have different flavors. Um, so that's really interesting and potentially useful for our waking up. Um, it, It'll shine lights on our assumptions about practice, about waking up, which is always really great in waking up. Uh, and this is really common in waking up traditions to say, what do you think about reality? What do you think it is? What are the concepts we're imposing on reality, on our experience? 
that are actually limiting if we buy into them completely without uh, questioning them. So this does that in a, in a bigger way, in a fruitful, creative uh, method. Um, I think also this uh, orients us to what might be most conducive to our uh, in our experience right now in our path. What kind of practice, what flavor of practice would most serve you in this moment? And if you only tend to look in one direction in terms of a flavor of waking up, you might miss an opportunity for yourself to deepen your own experience, you deepen your own awakening. So um, even if even if you explore and, and look in different directions, it might either affirm that, yes, what I'm doing right now is really what's most useful to me, or it might plant seeds for the future that, you know what, that doesn't feel like what I need right now, but maybe in the future and down, down the road, a few years from now, you're entering into a seeking phase again, and you're saying, I need something different, but I don't know what it is. Oh, I remember maybe that practice of Sufism was really interesting, or I've never done prayer before. What would that be like? Because I'm in the Buddhist tradition and, and maybe not doing prayer. Um, and really, my experience has been for myself and people who have been on path for quite a long time, eventually, uh, they're in I forget who might have originally noted this. I don't know if it was like Shinzen Young or somebody. I have to look this up. You can find it, but they're like an hourglass model of awakening. Vince, I think, interviewed somebody in Buddhist Geeks podcast, but at first, we have a wide funnel because we're exploring what might work for us. And then we find something and then we go really narrow and we go really deep into one method and way of waking up. And then later we open back up and start exploring different ways of waking up. And it just seems to naturally arise that way. But I think there are good reasons for it. There's a filling out of experience and realizing that, well, even though there are definitive points of waking up, it doesn't seem to be a path that finishes. You know, there's more, always more to deepen. Now, um, to explore one way of sniffing out different ways of uh, waking up, uh, gradual and sudden. You might have heard of these terms. When I went to, this is something I've, I, I've discussed a bunch in the past, and maybe just came up in integral community, but also it was really interesting that when I went Googling for it, there weren't a lot of resources. There was like different articles, and it's a common topic, I think. Um, but there are some resources and teachers out there who really go super deep into it in very geeky, uh, nerdy ways that I, I think are really cool. So I'm just going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you some quotes here to point you in directions of this, but also just try to point it out. So gradual, uh, two ways of, of summarizing this in really simple ways. Gradual says, you want to wake up, start doing something. Sudden says, you want to wake up, stop doing something. <laughs> Pretty much it. There's like, you know, you need practice, you need practice, like your hair's on fire, you got to do some things. And sudden is like, all this doing is really getting in your way of being present and waking up. And from there, the, the recommendations are super divergent if they're very much like only gradual or only sudden. Now we'll share some examples here of combining these. And really, I think in today's world, because of the cross pollinating of the waking up traditions, there's a sense of benefit of both, of gradual and sudden. So I don't, it seems less and less that I encounter people who feel like, nope, it's only gradual, or it's only sudden. Um, it's nice to combine them, but we'll talk about them separately. So uh, let's talk about gradual first, because I think this is pretty familiar. You know, in the Buddhist tradition, we have so many ways of laying out the path of awakening. I mean, it's just built into the Buddhist tradition. There is also sudden awakening and flavors of that, but really gradual is pretty obvious. So you have um, just the idea we have to cultivate, we have to practice, we have to cultivate capacities and we have to investigate. Without doing those things, it is said that we're not gonna really change anything in our experience. Uh, nothing will be different. We won't have any realization and it'll just be the same old, same old. So it requires effort. And we have things like the Noble Eightfold Path, classic in Buddhism, that's laying out essentially a guidebook, a map, like here, do emphasize these things, and then you're going to wake up. And one of those is uh, right effort. So there you go, put out effort. You need to put out effort. Uh, the six perfections, the six paramitas, uh, uh, perfect diligence or energy. Again, emphasis on do something, okay? Uh, the Dhammapada, uh, there's a, a little line I saw in here that kind of speaks to this. You yourselves must strive. The Buddhas only point the way. 
those uh, meditative ones who tread the path are released from the bonds of Mara, of attachment, greed, all these things. So it was right there, classic Buddhism, like make an effort. Um, so another one of the texts that I have here that I explored a long time ago is the jewel ornament of liberation. And this puts together a very classic gradual path. And if uh, we look at just the uh, areas of, of practice, um, first you start off with um, getting your attitude and focus in the right area, precious human life, uh, the fleeting impermanence of, of, of this life. So better get going and, and practice. Don't delay your efforts. Practice like your hair's on fire, finding um, you know teachers and, and a community to practice with so you can have support and guidance. Uh, reflecting on impermanence and karma, uh, cultivating loving kindness and compassion, the four measurables, taking refuge, precepts to guide your behavior. Lots of doing here. Um, bodhicitta, the six paramitas, and uh, of course, making progress. So in Tibetan Buddhism, they have the five paths model of waking up. So here's how this gradually happens. Uh, we, in Buddhist Geeks community, we use uh, the phases of insight and waves of wakefulness. It shows a path of awakening and unfolding. Okay, so that's the flavor of gradual in a nutshell. Now for the sudden uh, path, again, the one that says stop doing things, uh, here's a little quote uh, from, oh man, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, uh, Zongfeng Mingben, uh, Chinese Chan Zen master, uh, described the, the uh, sudden approach like this. Uh, Chan practice does not involve any progression. The absolute essence is free from all extremes and representations. In one realization, all is realized. In one flash of cognition, all is cognized. So complete opposite expression there. And I want to read something to you uh, from Ken McLeod, this book here, A Trackless Path. I really like uh, Ken's translations. And this is a translation of a text uh, that is, uh, let me get this title right, from Jing, uh, Jingmei Lingpa. And sorry, let me get uh, Revelations of Ever-Present Good. That's the English translation of it. So it's a little bit longer, but I'm gonna share this to you because it's, it really paints the flavor of the, the uh, idea like you don't need to do anything or the doing is what's getting in the way. So this is just one little section from this. Wonder of wonders, my nature is great con uh, completion. Complete in all experience, pattern or free, there is nothing to give up or attain. Complete all key instructions end up in utterly natural release. Complete all key outlooks end up in no conceptual position, complete all paths of practice end up in making no effort. Complete all teachings on behavior end up in no do's or don'ts. Complete the essence of result is to be free of hope. And this term complete is just a concept too. And as it goes on like this, I mean, it's just really doubling down of like, there's nothing to do here, just let go. Now we can talk about a combo, okay? uh of these paths and uh and actually this is how i experienced nam kai norbu one of my teachers in teaching sok jin it was the instructions were to enter into presence or primordial awareness just go right for it and then if you find you can't really be in that or you can't maintain it or it's not stable then find practices that you need in order to cultivate your ability to, to be present what do you need to work with um so Stop doing things, but if that's not working, start doing something. <laughs> that's how I would then phrase that integration. Um, and a couple of examples of this, uh, Ken, uh, Kenneth Folk, uh, one of Vince's teachers and, and you know one of the originators of social meditation, um, he wrote an article a long time ago, and I think he still references this three-speed transmission. And let's just say we're referencing awareness. So if we imagine a transmission, you know, shifting gears in a car, or motorcycle or something. First gear of practice is insight and concentration. Uh, so here we're going to apply effort and concentration investigating. And eventually our investigation is going to become so subtle or exhaust itself that awareness reveals itself. If we're using awareness as 
the descriptor of, of waking up here. Second gear of practice would be something like inquiry and using the question, who am I? So we're just trying to, we're doing effort, but we're trying to turn awareness back on itself such that poof, you know, there's a short circuit that happens and we're just present. And then third gear is just resting in awareness itself, not doing anything. So there's a sense here in practice of like, which gear do we need to be in at any moment in our practice? Then there's uh, another uh, classic teaching uh, that's attributed to God of Dorje in, in Sogjin, who I don't know, is kind of like half mythical figure, but said to be a, a person who existed, but who knows? And these, uh, he has these three points that um, are just either called something pretty simple, three statements, three points. Ken McLeod uh, called them out and write that title. He gave it a longer title, but a couple of translations. Introducing directly the face of Rigpa itself, presence, primordial awareness. Uh, decide upon one thing and one thing only. Confidence directly in the liberation of rising thoughts. Ken's version of this is there. This is what you are. There, nothing else matters. There, now let it unfold. Now these three statements correlate to this as well. It's like, you know, what is our true nature and enter into that right now. And then, but you know, you gotta get confidence in it, which is, means practice and work through your experience. And then um, over time it just matures and you can let it be, okay? This is my very short <laughs> commentary on that. Um, and, there was another quote in a great book that I want to explore more that explicitly goes into this. And this is from uh, a Zen, Korean Zen master, Chinul, that Vince uh, told me about. And the book title is Numinous Awareness, I believe. And they have a Kindle version. The, the, the paperback is really expensive. But he, there's a quote from the person who was uh, the translator putting together. And it was, and Chinul emphasized both you know, the introduction essentially to the, the, to an essential state of being, and then working gradually with that in practice. And the summary was something like to not only realize you're a Buddha, but to act like one too. And that was, a, I love that phrase. So there was like a, like sense of waking up and cultivating that needed to happen there. So that's a looking at integration of, of uh, sudden and gradual. And uh, I shared this quote last week, but again, I think it's relevant uh, from Dongshan's five ranks and Ross Belletter. Even after deep realization, we feel that it is not enough. Actually, that is a measure of its depth. The deeper the realization, the deeper the sense that it is not enough. So even regardless whatever flavor, sudden or gradual, there, there seems to reveal itself a sense of like more, more to to deepen, not even necessarily more to achieve, but more unfolding that we're in the stream of this unfolding experience. And so, yeah, I'm gonna give myself over to that. And then last, continuing this exploration of waking up in this training uh, of integral Dharma, we're saying waking up doesn't even finish here. We, we find it important to cultivate our experience in other ways of cleaning up, working with healing, working with our own uh, maturation, working with how we're responding to the world, which again, exists outside of a different category of waking up in the integral model. But I feel that that's connected in, in especially in the, in the idea of a fourth turning of Buddhism, that we're not just going to stop, that there's a stop point in, in waking up. So, okay, that's all I want to say on that. Uh, before we get into some practice of, actually, I will say a little bit more on the practice we're going to do um of there is noting six senses this has to do uh or has a flavor of of gradual awakening because we're investigating our experience we're putting out effort to see what is there and noting it objectively and with sudden here and the difference might feel subtle here but i think you can you can fill this out with noting is like this so in the first one, there is noting, there is seeing, for example, there is seeing. Noting is like this is going to be, seeing is like this. There's a real sense that there's nothing else to be done with the seeing, just the seeing is enough. And so we can get a little bit of a flavor difference there, even in these two uh, practices. Um, so I'll talk more about that.